What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. So we're on to week three of the July internationals. We've been doing all the previews, checking out the teams. We've already done Springboks versus Wales, All Blacks versus Ireland and the Wallabies versus England. They're all up on the channel. Feel free to go watch them after this one if you haven't already. This time is the turn of Argentina versus Scotland. Now last week, Scotland came away with a very convincing win. Uh, that was more aligned the sort of scores that I was expecting from the first test, uh, which didn't really sort of materialise. Scotland really just looked on the back foot. They didn't look like they had a lot of shape, no real gameplay. Um, they just didn't really do anything. They just sort of let Argentina just sort of steamroll the bar like a 20-minute period into the second half. Um, in the second test... They got their act together. They sorted themselves out. They managed to just gel together and get that t final 10% absolutely nailed. They were getting over for tries. They were just absolutely running Argentina ragged in terms of their attacks, making great lines. They could have potentially had more. They had Duan van der Merwe going down the wing at one point. Could have potentially led to another try. They had another one that got over the try line. The score could have been even bigger. Scotland looked very, very good. It was a bit overriding of Argentina. Argentina looked really good in that game as well, actually. For a number of reasons, but the scoreboard doesn't reflect how well they did in defense, how well they did in attack, but just had their tries disallowed for one reason or another. Um, the scoreboard could have been much tighter. So Argentina will potentially be looking for some redemption in this game. So looking forward to this game. Let's check out the team that's been announced. Starting off with the forwards, we have Gallo, Crevy, and Sklavi coming in here. Now Crevy came on, made a big impact last game. So nice to see him in there. Um, they've switched up this front row a lot during this, this tour. They, they keep swapping different players out for they're obviously trying to find what they want in that front row to be scotland actually looked really in charge of the scrum last league it was a real positive for them especially against a team like argentina that's so known for their forwards um i think they'll take huge positives away from that so argentina tried to switch back now mix it up again try and regain some dominance in those scrums in the lock departments guido petty and lavanini coming in now now this is a stronger setup for me um in terms of their line out performance they, they did take off a couple of forwards last week they're obviously just testing some stuff putting some slightly lesser cap players on um they're moving back to some big guns now they can win the the test series it's worth putting on the bigger lads here to try and see if you can come away with a win i think it's a good move uh in the back row we have pablo matera coming back into the team taking over captaincy as well nice to see um santiago grondrona and Issa coming in there as well. Now, Issa has been playing well. Pablo Matera, I'm glad to see coming back in. I actually didn't know he was playing captain. That's nice to see. Overall, I think this one to eight is looking pretty good. This is looking like a generally quite a bigger set of forwards than we've got to see in the last couple of games. So I'm liking where they're going with this. This will be a much more aggressive game. Scotland are going to have to fight. We already saw how well defensively based that Argentina team was. They were rushing off the line. The blitz defense putting lots of pressure on Scotland. So having the bigger lads there just means your tackles are going to be even harder. In terms of the halfback partnership, we have a debutant big Beginning this third test, very interesting. Uh, Lautaro Bazan Velez, hopefully pronouncing at least a bit correct there. Don't know the name, don't know the player. We'll be interested to see how he gets on. And then in that flight half, should Santiago Carreras, as we've seen him throughout this tour now, unfortunately, uh, Sanchez going out with that injury, never made a comeback. But Carreras has been absolutely um, on top form, really nice to see. In the centre partnership, Moroni and Orlando, both playing well across both tests so far um, and, and just making big waves in that Scotland defensive work. Both, uh, in both games, we've seen these players making huge metres they're getting the offloads. I've been particularly impressed by Orlando. Not someone I knew a lot about coming into this test series, but it's really, really impressed me. And then in that back three, we have Boffelli, Delgi, and Malia. Um, now, Boffelli's kicking last week. Uh, didn't really have the opportunity to get a lot of kicking, to be fair. Scotland really held Argentina back an awful lot in that game. Um, they've been mixing up these back three a bit as well across the, across the three games. So, Interesting to see if they can just get it down. They use the backs really well in Argentina. They are so aggressive in their running style with the backs. Um, they are making big room, but that Scotland team defence just holding up. I would like to see some more set plays from Argentina, as opposed to just letting these one-off um, centres or wingers just charging and, and hoping someone's on the shoulder. I would like to see some new set plays from them. Hopefully we get to see that in the uh, in the third test. And then in terms of the substitutes, we have uh, Ignacio Ruiz coming in there as well as another debutante for this game. Uh, Tatez, Chaparro, Gomez, Cordella, Marcos Kramer goes on the bench this week. Actually, he played quite well last week. Uh, Gonzalez, Bertrano, another debutante in Thomas Albornoz. 
and Lucio Sinti as well on the bench now. So three debutants coming into this game. Argentina are obviously building towards a World Cup. Scotland is a good team to try and get some debutants on, get them used to, you know, tier one rugby, see if they can cope with it. I don't think it's a terrible move. It could be a big call, though, for the third test. It might actually make it more likely to end up losing this test with so many new debutants coming on. Two on the bench, though, so to bring on in that last minute. If you're already losing by 20 points, you know, what difference does it make? You might as well have them get a bit of experience in tier one. Um, Bertrand has been playing really well, actually. I'm quite surprised to see him starting on the bench. They obviously want to give him uh, a bit of a shot to get to the new debutant lad and bring Bertrand on later. Um, I think it's a good Argentina team. It's just whether they can just get that, that last 10%, get that try, get the ball down over the line, get through that Scotland defence, put the pressure on them that we saw in the first game and just keep that defensive wall holding to go through the phases and not let Scotland get over for the try. On to the Scotland team then, who looked very confident last week. They just generally got all the areas that I mentioned in the first game. They just got all of them fixed. Uh, like I said, the, that final 10%, getting those last passes done, working much better. The running player is much better, keeping the ball in hand, not just booting it to Argentina constantly, uh, which was much better. I thought White had a really good game at scrum half last week. Kinghorn is settling now in that fly half shirt. He's getting used to the speed of an Argentina attack. He's got to he's got to make those decisions quicker. There was an occasional you know mishaps here and there, a couple of ball drops, and um, Duan van der Merve getting running around the outside, getting pushed into touch rather than just stepping back inside. There's a couple of things still to work on, um, but they'll be happy with that overall score last week. I thought the lineouts were doing much better from them, um, and the scrummaging in particular was looking really really good so in terms of the team this week starting off in this front row Rory Sutherland Ewan Ashman and Xander Fagerson this is a big Scotland front row um, keep the keep the momentum going if you're winning in the scrums already put these lads on there's some good experience in there keep that pressure going on in the lock department Scott Cummings and Johnny Gray as vice captain here now Johnny Gray um, I feel like we haven't seen a lot of Johnny Gray throughout this this test series so nice to see him back in there in that five shirt um, some big players there in terms of in, disrupting uh, line out to give them a good platform to launch from. In the back row, Rory Darge, Hamish Watson and Matt Fagerson. Now, Hamish Watson has taken over as captain in this game. Uh, that's an interesting mix. So I can't remember who was captain last week. I've got a feeling... I felt like Blair Kinghorn was captain. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe I've just made that up. Um, but these three played exceptionally last week. All three of them, different reasons. Rory Darge and Hamish Watson were absolutely on it in terms of just tackle rate and breakdown. Matt Fagerson was over there for jackals at really crucial times, but also just running with the ball in hand looked really, really good. Um, these three, for me, are the, the, the three picks. Even when Jamie Ritchie comes back, I'd be keeping Darge on in that six shirt. Hamish Watson, I just think, dominates seven. And Matt Ferguson at eight. I, I think I'd be sticking with these three lads now, looking towards the Six Nations and beyond. In terms of the halfback partnership then, Ali Price comes in on the starting in scrum half. Um, I, I don't know if I, if I, don't know if I like that move. I, I understand Ali Price is probably the top choice for a lot of people. Um, I just feel like last game it felt so comfortable for Scotland. They felt like they were really doing a lot. I thought White was playing well. George Horn is on the bench for this game. I would like to see Scotland give more time to their second string um, scrum halves and get them used to a game. I don't really know what they're going to learn a lot in this game from watching Ali Price play 65 minutes of this game. Um, against an Argentina team with three debutants, you know, if, if they end up winning this game by, you know, a similar scoreline to what they did last week, is Ali Price being there really going to make a great deal of difference? Um, I think I would try and let Blair Kinghorn run it. I feel like Ali Price will take over running that back play. I would like to see a second string scrum half in here, really, just to get more experience in this Scottish back line. Blair Kinghorn retains his fly half shirt. Nice to see. I think he's settling into it, which is, which is always useful. Um, I still think you've got a couple of choices potentially ahead of him in terms of fly half, but he's got his game down it's nice to see in the center partnership Tui Pilotu and Mark Bennett this time is going to be the, the center partnership I think this is nice um, Mark Bennett for me is much more attacking whereas Tui Pilotu I think is doing really well in terms of defensive work every game that I've seen him defensively um, he's doing well a lot of people talk about his attack I think his defensive work is going quite well so a nice move there and then in the back three Duan van der Merve retains that left wing Rufus McLean comes in on the right wing and Ollie Smith taking over in the fullback so some big switch ups um, in the back three um, again Darcy Graham I thought was playing well um, but you know give the experience out Rufus McLean uh, missed out I, I think he had an injury didn't he in the in the first test didn't get to play a lot so yeah give them time use this game this is a great way to get used to get ready for a world cup situation you're absolutely making the most of this and then in terms of the replacements then we have dave cherry pierre schumann and yavan sebastian um 
uh, yeah, probably a lesser capped front row, but I still think a lot of power here. Dave Cherry is 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 playing well. He's got some good speed on him. Um, I'm trying to think of the lineups. Lineups were a bit tricky last week because of the amount of wind that was going on in this game. Um, but Pierre Schumann coming on from the bench. If you want to load up your scrum, if you're already winning the scrum battle and then you bring on players like Schumann in that second half when other players are tired, yeah, I, I can see that being a good move. Um, replacement forwards, we've got Glenn Young and Andy Christie. Um, I don't know a lot about Glenn Young. I'll have to keep a bit of an eye out for him. Uh, and then replacement backs, George Horn, as I've already mentioned, Ross Thompson and Sam Johnson. Now, at first glance, you sort of think, oh, Sam Johnson on the bench. I've got a centre on there. Is that is that the right call? Now, I, I think that's a good move, actually. Um, two Pilot is not a great deal of game time. I'm not sure about the potential for Two Pilot or Sam Johnson to move to outside centre. Someone who's a bit more of a hardcore Scotland fan can let me know if either of those players are actually are capable or have done in the past move to outside centre. I see them both as inside centres. But the joy of having someone like Blair Kinghorn in a team who's so utility based he can play fullback or he can play wing so Blair Kinghorn actually gives you the the coverage for the back three which is really nice so if you want to have an injury or something that's come on maybe in the fullback position Blair Kinghorn can move to fullback you can bring Ross Thompson on uh, in that number 10 shirt so you've got back coverage anyway in the back three there's no point really having a replacement winger there so having a replacement center is the right move and Tweed Plot who's probably had less game time we've already seen Mark Bennett play the full 80 Sam Johnson I think is the right move there I think that's pretty good coverage uh, Ross Thompson last week uh, kicking due He's on it, looking really good. Um, didn't really get to take over the 10 because Kinghorn was still on. The injuries sort of messed up who was where. Um, so looking forward to seeing him. Hopefully he actually gets to play a bit of 10 um, and actually sort of take over that area. Maybe they'll still keep Blair Kinghorn on and just move into a different position. Uh, but I think if they're winning by enough, potentially, they might take him off and might just give Ross Thompson a go. But overall, it's a good it's a good Scotland team. Um, both teams going for some big changes this week uh, in terms of just their general setup. So it's going to be interesting to see how this game pans out in terms of a score prediction. Ooh, uh, I think I'm I think I'm still back in Scotland. I backed Scotland in the first game and they just didn't turn up. And then in the second game, I was like, if Scotland just sort out what they're doing, they'll win. And they did exactly that. Went on to win, even with all the you know the points that Argentina didn't quite manage to score. I still felt that Scotland looked in control going into this game. Make the most of it. I think Scotland are going to have the momentum going into this game. They've made, I think, less changes that could be risky. I think having three debutants this game might be a bit of a hindrance for uh, for Argentina. So I'm going to say Scotland to win. Um, and I'm going to say Scotland to win by six. I think that's what I'm going to call it. I think it'll be within that try score. Uh, but just keep those three points ticking over. We might be able to see Scotland pull this one off. But there we have it, guys. That is going to be the preview video for today. Let me know what you think of the game that's coming up. What do you think of the teams that have been announced? Who do you think is going to win? All that good stuff. Drop it down in the comments because I do really enjoy having a read through. And if you've enjoyed this one today, remember to leave it a like and to keep up to date with all of the match reports that are going to be going on for these games. Remember to subscribe to the channel. It's free. It's super easy. It's one button. Just click it. It really helps the channel out and it lets you know as soon as the videos are up on the channel. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye. Bye-bye.